Well, welcome to Let's Fly VFR, and today we're in Adelaide Soaring Club in South Australia. Today we're going to check out the light sport aircraft available here, gliders, and much more. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. All the next plane 11. Props, jets, and much more. All done in real world weather. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. And here's our first takeoff for the day. This is a Jabiru 170. There's a number of different models of Jabiru's. The easiest way to tell the difference is generally the wingtips. The old, older model Jabiru 160s didn't have any wingtips and their wing was slightly different. The large extension on the tail as well is something that's new to the 170 model. The aircraft is an 80 horsepower Jabiru engine. It stalls at about 45 knots and that keeps it within the light sport aircraft parameters. It cruises around about the 100 knots. Um, if you've got a bit of weight, you've got two passengers and a fair bit of fuel, it's probably more towards the 95 knot range that I've found. It's following out, checking the brakes. There's only a light wind around today, so... See which way they go. So the runways here are 05, which runs from left to right. As we look out from the hangars, 23 goes back the other way, and then we have 13 from our left as we turn, and that goes to our right as we're looking now, and that on the return side of that is runway 31. So let's go and have a look around at Jabiru. Well here we are inside the main hangar of Adelaide Soaring Club. Behind me you can see the Jabiru 170. This is a pretty major training aircraft for this club. They have quite a number of them. We've just had one taxi out and we have another one going in the very near future. There are also a number of gliders here. It's a bit of a mixed club between gliding and light sport. There are a lot of private owners here as well, have their own hangars. If you've seen the layout on the early videos that I did based here in the X-Plane 11 sim, then you'll have seen the club and the way it's basically laid out. If you would like to be a light sport pilot and you're concerned about uh, any medical issues that you may have, if you qualify to own a driver's license here in Australia, then you qualify to have a license. Now there's obviously got to be some common sense there. If you have heart issues or you have other things that may cause uh, issues in flight, then obviously it's probably better to get some advice from your doctor. But if you are relatively healthy, you have a driver's license and you would like to fly, this is probably one of the most inexpensive ways to get into flying. And uh, once you've done it, <laughs> you're not going to want to stop. So let's have a look around the jab route. Well, this is the business end of the Jabiru 170. This is an Australian built aircraft. The engine is a 80 horsepower, four cylinder air cooled engine. Very typical of any aviation engine you would find in, uh, in a Cessna, but just a little on the smaller side. Although probably quite similar to the O200, I believe it's a similar size. It has a fixed prop, so it's quite simple to operate. It's not complicated at all. So let's have a look at some of the features of the Jabiru 170. The aircraft is, th is quite thick and the wing is quite thick as you can see. It does have this little fin at the back here to help with your vortices. And because of its thickness, it has quite a low stall speed and it's very stable. In fact, it, when you fly it, it, it seems a little hard to roll on some occasions. It doesn't really move around quickly. The earlier model of this, the Jabiru 160, its wing was slightly different. This wing is actually the same as its bigger brother, the Jabiru 230, which is a six cylinder model. That is much more powerful at about 120 horsepower as opposed to the 170's 80 horsepower. As we move down the wing, we have another couple of features here. This is the 
store warning sensor for the aircraft. This one, if you suck on it, uh, it actually uh, sets off the, the sensor and tells you that you're getting very close to stall. Because the wind, the air, normally just flows directly over here and keeps the pressure inward on this. This is my understanding of it. When you get a stall, the air is actually moves away and it starts to suck at the sensor and then the sensor makes the noise. Hopefully you can hear that. And it's a simple test, that's what we do every time we go flying. On top of the wing here, you can see a little cover. This is to provide positive pressure for the fuel tanks. The aircraft has two wing tanks and a central tank underneath the aircraft where the fuel comes down and is fed from. So let's move on a little further. The Jabro also has a number of static probes. This one here is your pedo probe. This one helps you with your airspeed indication and a number, anything else that's required to give you indications that require positive pressure against it. So you always make sure that's on so you don't get any bees or anything deciding to make homes in there. On the back of the aircraft we have a full length elevator. The elevator is able to move up and down as you would expect. And we have a rudder. The rudder is also linked to the nose wheel so pulling this here is not a good idea because it puts extra pressure on the components. But it's cable, cable driven here. So here we are in the cockpit of the Javaru 170. As you can see, it is reasonably cramped. There's enough room for two people, but you're fairly close together. So you want to have good friends. Let me give you another closer view of the cockpit. So here ahead of me, we have our speed indicator. As, as you can see, we have the white zone, the green zone, and then the yellow zone. If you get it into the yellow zone, that's, that is okay, but you shouldn't be on, go beyond the top limit here. But if you're in reasonably good air, this is generally where you're going to find the 170 cruising. It's going to be around about the 100 knot, maybe just a little under. If you've got a good day and you're very light, you'll go a little over possibly. Altimeter here. So you change your altimeter settings by rotating this knob here. And we can set that pretty simply here, just setting it to 165, because that's the altitude of the, the airport. So if you have a known airport altitude, then you can go ahead and fix that. Here's our radio selector here. We have two channels on here. We can transmit on one, but we can listen to two at the same time, which is very, very handy. So you can listen to your CTAF frequency and you can monitor uh, emergency frequencies or you can monitor the airport frequency if you're coming from outside, coming in. You can listen ahead and listen to see what's going on at the airport before you arrive. Here, it looks like they've added a second radio here. That's, it could be a radio. It may be something else. I'm not familiar with that. We do have some engine instruments over here. As you can see, we have dual throttles on either side of the aircraft. We have... the Joystick is actually in the middle here. As you can see it's got cables to it and it's all run by cables, elevator cable and ailerons. So I'm not going to go pulling on them because you don't need to do that on the ground. Down here we have a number of switches. The switches themselves here are all for, uh, for lights, for our ignition. We have an ignition switch on the older models but this one doesn't have an ignition switch so you don't have a key to turn. Over here you can see the uh, the GPS, so the GPS in this one here, so it's reasonably well fitted out for doing some cross country work. If you want to check your fuels, then your fuels are actually up here. You can check the indication here, there's one on this side and one there's one above my head on the left hand side as well. You can see it's reasonably well lined out and there's a bit of storage area at the back. I'll try and turn it around for you so you can see there. But you do have to be careful about how much weight you put there. You've got to watch your weight and balance. If you put too much at the back and then you take off, you may not have enough down authority or forward authority on the stick and you find that you climb up and then you can't get the nose down and then you stall and crash. So it's very crucial that you're conscious of your weight and balances in your aircraft. Thanks for watching. Let's fly VFR. I'll see you in the next video.